been sort of like this as you move from like journalism into not that there's a particularly sort of like a separation between the two, especially recently, I feel like there's more emotional depth in journalism in the same way that there is in yeah. what would typically be sort of considered like, you know, a more like cinematic kind of documentary, but sort of at what point did you feel yourself as as a filmmaker sort of deepening your creative practice and sort of bringing your own sort of emotional sensibilities in terms of the way that you tell your stories and how are you sort of manifesting potentially like your own perspective in terms of the way that you tell a story, even if it's someone else's um, in this sort of nonfiction format? Because I feel like that's, that's increasingly like a trajectory that I'm seeing through your career is like mm -hmm. there's more resonance between the stories of the individuals that you're following and also what you connect to as an mm -hmm. artist and filmmaker in that and the way that you then sort of increasingly and this sort of will dovetail a little bit into the podcast now is sort of like what draws you to that story in your own experience and then what is the way that your own personal experience is then sort of pulled into the narrative that you're telling and how did that, um, how has that evolved over your career? I think it began with me having a conversation with you, believe it or not. And I vividly remember this. I was not we expecting you, you to say we, I didn't, we, I was not. We, <laughs> we sent you a cut of like an early version of an interview or something, and you hated it. <laughs> and you were just like, this is awful. I mean, you were nice about it, but you meant it was awful. No way and I would like, have said that. <laughs> but like, I was like, oh, okay. And, and you were like, you know, <laughs> I remember you being like, watch these films to like kind of think about how else you can tell this. And I remember that and I and I I'm grateful for that. You know, because I was telling this story or or thinking about this story really in in journalistic ways. And in sometimes we think when we're telling stories in journalism, especially I think if you're younger, you think like they have to be boring and you can only tell the facts, right? We remove the emotion out of it because we think that's being objective and that's how we're supposed to do journalism. But I think we're seeing now more and more how flawed that formula could be because, you know, you remove the individuality of the person whose story you're telling. Your, your context is important. It does matter who they are, where they come from, their, you know, socioeconomic situation. And I think more and more, especially journalists of color are challenging this notion of objectivity in journalism and, and how we approach that. And, and bringing your personal lived experience does not make you um, unable to do journalism. Um, as we've kind of been told for a long time, it did. Um, and, you know, for example, if, if, if a soldier was being talking about being in the military, we didn't think that was weird. We thought that's okay. He's he's a reporter who happened to be um, in the military and he's bringing his experience. That we were fine with that. But when it was um, journalists of color talking about their communities, immediately they were labeled as being biased and mm. that we can't bring that into sto the story. So I think there's definitely been a shift um, in my storytelling, but I also I think in general we're you know, there's a larger conversation happening about, is that really the kind of stories we want to tell? Is that really what journalism is? Or is that really what journalism should be? And who, who does that, who does that narrative serve? Um, and I, and I think that conversation has definitely allowed journalists to enter spaces, creative spaces and tell stories in different ways that perhaps 10, 20 years ago, we weren't telling. Um, and so I think it, I've evolved, but I think it's part of a larger conversation that I'm evolving with, um, mm -hmm. where we're beginning to, to, to challenge how people of color, journalists of color have been told is appropriate to tell their stories. What I think about when I think it's, is it appropriate to include my my lived experience in this story that I'm telling is really to make sure I do it in a way that feels authentic, that actually makes me, that there's something happening in the story 
that actually brings out these feelings. It's not like it's not fabricated. And the way I usually do that is I would tell the story or I would create the scene without me in it. And that way I know it exists without me and it can't exist without me. And then when I, however much of myself I, I, I might want to include, it doesn't feel as forced to me because like mm -hmm. I truly am bringing that in because I think it enhances the story or it's important to the story, but not as a way to just tell the story to make sure when I do bring in my own lived experience, um, it's, it's done in a way that honors the stories of the other people who have shared um, their journeys with me in this podcast or in this film. I don't want my experience to overtake that, um, overtake their the space that I'm trying to create for them.